good morning students after learning very important aspects historical aspects of uh, cytology and uh, now knowing name of few of the eminent scientist in the field of biology now we will move to learn a very important topic that is cell theory okay so cell theory it was proposed by two scientist right namely matthias sleden right who was a german botanist that is in 1838 right and uh, theodor swan right who was a british geologist in 1839 right so these two independently right uh, uh, they proposed the cell theory right so their investigations were independent and separate okay so this was somewhere around mid of the 19th century that you can consider right so you need to remember the year when they uh, 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 you can propose the concepts of the cell theory name of the scientist and also you need to remember that uh, 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 which one of this is a botanist and a zoologist definitely you will be able to remember these two name right very easy to remember sleden and swan right as you will come across uh the details of the cell theory you will be able to remember the name but it is important to remember their uh you guess that designation also right that their specialization was in right for sleden it was in bot uh, uh, he was having special uh, uh, specialization in botany and swan definitely was a zoologist so how can we remember this right so very simple trick for this right if Uh, 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 uh most of you must be aware of a gujarati word right that is swan right here definitely what is written is surname right but in gujarati right we refer swan right swan no matlab shu thase dog right kutru to ek aise andar definitely zoology refers to study of animals right animal kingdom and now you can correlate right that with animals right if a surname swan is been there you can easily correlate that theodor swan was a zoologist right this is just to remember right for easy remembrance nothing else right so such type of trick you can definitely use right and then if definitely someone ask that which of the following is a, a zoologist who proposed cell theory and in that case your option that will be given to you will be sleden swan both of this right or maybe something else in that case you can easily remember that zoologist was swan if you are able to identify zoologist definitely the other one right that is sleden is automatically a botanist okay so this is how you can remember the names fine so definitely again we are revising the name matthias sleden and as i told you that he was a botanist so what he proposed that all plants are composed of different kinds of cells which form the tissues of the plant if you recall our first lecture we have said we have defined the cell that it is the structural and functional unit of life right so definitely for living organism all living organism it is applicable and sleden proposed this statement for plant right it was only for the plant and plant tissues that he studied and for plants he proposed such type of such statement right so this you can consider right that what he tried to say right definitely that plants are composed of cell right and this cell also definitely includes cell products right so any cell right along with the cellular products that forms the basis of life right what you call as a building block of life so that is was first proposed by matthias sleden and that was taken as a uh, as a concept of the cell theory right but definitely it was only limited for the plant so similar theory was proposed by swan and what he did was he studied different type of animal cells now here he reported a unique thing right a difference between uh, uh, you can say that uh, uh, plant cell and animal cell that is what he you can say that uh, 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 mention right so i am drawing a structure right say for example this is a structure right so what he said that animal cells they have a small or a thin outer layer right so this outer layer 
which is definitely now we are referring as a plasma member. Once there was a, uh, 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 you could say it, uh, investigation, right? Once there was a invention of uh, electron microscope, then definitely we have gone through the detail of this structure, okay? But uh, definitely uh, 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 this structure, right, was proposed as a thin outer layer by Theodore Swann, right? And what he said was, right, another thing that he proposed was that this structure, right, that same structure, whenever it is present in the plant, that is having two covering, right. So, this covering, outer covering, outermost layer of the plant cell, he referred as a cell wall, right. So, this is cell wall, right. Cell wall, as we have discussed in the earlier lecture also, that is a dead part of a cell. It is not a living substance. Inside of the cell wall, right, now we refer, right, this, inside to all this, right, using again another color. So, right from this structure, right, this is definitely referred as a plasma membrane. But inside of all this, right, inside the cell wall, whatever present inside the cell is called as a protoplasm, right, living substance that is present in a cell that is identified as protoplasm right this also is one time asked right define protoplasm right? protoplasm is a living substance in a cell okay and that includes cell membrane cytoplasm and a nucleus right so i'm drawing a nucleus right here definitely all organelles will be there right and along with the cytosol it will form cytoplasm and then finally cell membrane so there was a clear cut difference that he showed right for is that plant cell as well as animal cell so for plant cell what he said that their presence of a cell wall is a unique character of a plant plant cells right and in case of this animal cell definitely thin outer layer is there right that means there is absence of cell wall right and that is definitely a primary difference between a plant cell and an animal cell Okay, animal cell outer covering is always a plasma membrane. For a plant cell, outer covering is always a cell wall. Fine. So that is what he proposed. Right. So, in a sense, you can also consider that he proposed a difference between a plant cell and animal cell. Right. And same statement, what Sleden that has given uh, uh, for plant, same same statement that was derived by uh, 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 Swan for animal cells. Right. So, what he said, right, that all cells. Right, so Swan proposed the hypothesis, right, based on the observation of Sleden for the plant cell and definitely independent discovery for animal cell. What he discovered was, or what he stated was, that the bodies of animals and plants are composed of cells and products of the cells, right. Definitely, these products of the cells are important for life metabolic activity, regulatory activity, right, all of these they are. Uh, 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 definitely because of these products of these cells, okay. So, in that case, say for example, you consider cytoplasm, right. So, there are lots of products that you will find, right, which are cellular. So, in that case, definitely this defines the cell, right. What we said in our earlier lecture, that cell is a smallest structural and functional unit of the life that can be understood from the theories those are, that is proposed by Sleden and Swan, okay, very easy, right, so this, but we have to remember the year in which they proposed and second thing is, you need to uh, 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 remember which one of these is a botanist and which one of these is a zoologist, okay, so if you remember, if you are able to remember this, definitely uh, 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 you will be able to derive, otherwise, once you are knowing that Sleden is a botanist, definitely this detail are very easy, right, once you are knowing Swan is a zoologist, which we have understood from a Gujarati word, okay, fine, so definitely now it is very easy, now there is a limitation of cell theory, right, what is that limitation, that limitation comes that there was no explanation that how new cells are formed, right, how cell works or how cell is considered as a unit of life, right, structural function, that definitely can be understood, but how new cells are formed, that was not explained and definitely you know that, right, that was described in a form of a sentence, sentence which we call as a omnis cellula, a cellula, can you give me the name of scientist who stated this sentence, 
Yes, it was none other than Robert, sorry, Rudolf Vishro, right? So, Rudolf Vishro, uh, he proposed omnicellular cellular, right? That means all cells, new cells, right? They arises from the, you can say, division of the pre-existing cell, okay? So, what cell theory is understood today is in definitely two different, uh, uh, you can say that uh, statement that you need to consider. One, definitely one which was proposed by your uh, scientists Sleden and Swan, right? And what uh, they told, right? Independently, they uh, uh, investigated in case of plant and animal cell was that all living organisms are composed of cells and products of cell. And second statement that was added after the discovery of the, you can say that the concept of omnicellular cellular, right? How new cells are formed. And that is definitely all cell arises from pre-existing cell, right? This was a statement of Rudolf Vishro, which was uh, uh, been, you can say, added afterwards, right? Previously, it was not part of a cell theory, right? Now, it is a part of it. So, what is understood today is these two statements, right? All living organisms, they are composed of cells and products of the cells, okay? This is very true and this you will uh, uh, learn in each and every chapter that you are going to deal in the biology, fine? And all cell arises from pre-existing cell, right? By division of this uh, uh, you can say existing cell. Now, when it comes to division, you must uh, you can say understood the basic theory of uh, you can say that uh, uh, cell division, right? Definitely, we'll get in details uh, whenever we deal with that chapter, right? Cell cycle and cell division. We are going to get in detail, but just a basic of this you should be knowing because we'll need this in the next slide. Okay, fine. So, cell division, right? Cell division here. I can divide in two different phases, right? Right. Which are these phases? Right. Phases include two. Right. One that is division of nucleus. Right. There are clear cut. Right. Actually, there is a cell cycle. Right. Under which the cell will prepare for the cell division, and then actually cell goes for a division. Right. So when the cell division process is going on, initially there is a division of nucleus right so there is a nuclear division and that is referred as a karyokinesis Car karyo refers to nucleus right you all know that we have learned in the last lecture and then finally there is a division of cytoplasm right at the end right then and then cell division can be completed right so two components cytoplasm includes definitely both cytosol as well as all cell organ okay i hope it is clear right it is then my handwriting, right? You just please uh, try to understand what I've written, right? Here it's written as a nucleus, and second word is cytoplasm. So initially there is division of nucleus, what you call as a karyokinesis. Kinesis refers to movement, and movement here we will try to understand in a form of a, uh, a, a division, right? Mo movement which will lead to division, right? So that is karyokinesis, and second is the division of cytoplasm, and that we call as a cytokinesis. Okay, so this two, you can say that uh, 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 process you will need uh, uh, as a part of understanding, right? Whenever we discuss exception to the cell theory, right? I hope this theory is very clear to you. Okay, then and then we can move to the cell theory. If you need, definitely you can revise, right? Especially what I told you that revision of these details are needed, right? What the details that who proposed the cell theory, or which of the scientist right who is a botanist and propose a cell theory if someone asks like this definitely your answer will be Sleden right Matthias Sleden right and he proposed this in 1838 right he was first to propose but then it was in the plants that's why uh, uh, we'll remember that him as a botanist okay German botanist and definitely second scientist right is Theodore Swan uh, who was a, a British zoologist right and in 1839 he proposed this parallel theory, right, for the animal cell, as well as he discussed the difference between animal cell and a plant cell. For plant cell, he he showed a characteristic cell wall is is present, right, is a unique feature. And for animal cell, he said that there is no cell wall, just a thin outer layer is there, which we now know is a plasma membrane. Fine. So on that basis, the initial cell theory, initial understanding was this only. Right, that bodies of animal and plant are composed of cell 
end products of the cell right that was considered as a cell theory but now we are considering the uh, uh, rudolf bischoff statement and that is for the division of the cell or formation of the new cell and definitely now our understanding is in the form of this two sentence okay so so rapidly moving towards the exception to the cell theory now as we have understood that cell is 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 explained as a basic unit of life structural and functional unit of life so that is fine that is definitely true but that is true for multicellular organism right on the basis of the you can say that uh, 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 number of cell you can divide an organism into two types right so a uh, organism a uh, animal right can be or a plant right can be you can say that uh, divided in two different class on the basis of number of cell if number of cell are only one right single then you will call it as a unicellular cell and if there are more than one cells right then we will call it as a multicellular organism okay so very easy right very easily you can correlate you can understand again wherever you have unicellular cells again you can have two division and that division i am not writing here but then again you can divide on the basis of organization of nucleus i hope you have remembered right so on the basis of organization of the nucleus definitely this unicellular cell can be divided into two different class if there is a true level of organization that is nuclear membrane is present and dna is wrapped around histone protein that means the arrangement of dna is very well developed such type of an organisms they are referred as a eukaryotic organisms right eu refers to true and karyon refers to nucleus similarly if this unicellular organism if they don't have a well developed nucleus instead what you call as a nucleoid right their nucleus is actually referred as a nucleoid okay so nucleoid means what right i hope you have understood or you have remember the word oid right oid refers to similar right where you where you have this suffix right that oid refers to similar so one which is similar to nucleus is called as a nucleoid okay so prokaryotic organisms they don't have you can say that uh, 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 well developed nucleus right instead they have a nucleus like structure so if they have a nucleus like structure right that is called as a nucleoid right so such organisms they are referred as a pro because they are having a primitive level of organization in nucleus that's why they are referred as a prokaryotes again organism you can divide in two types on the basis of number of cell if single cell is there you will call it as a unicellular organism if more than one cells are there you will call it as a multicellular organisms multicellular organisms are always eukaryotic right so there is no further division like this right they are always eukaryotic unicellular organisms can be of because there are two types that is prokaryotic and eukaryotic and this classification we have made on the basis of the nuclear organization right i hope it is clear now fine so those type of prokaryotic cell definitely prokaryotic cell always will be unicellular right so unicellular prokaryotic organisms they are under they are discussed in our book under the heading of monera right monera kingdom there are five kingdoms which are mentioned in our textbook right when you will go through a chapter of a uh, 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 animal king classification of an animal kingdom right so monera kingdom is you guys are discussing the prokaryotics right prokaryotes right definitely are always unicellular now in eukaryotics there are two possibility unicellular and multicellular we are not going to discuss multicellular eukaryotics but we are going to discuss definitely eukaryotics which are unicellular and those type of cells they are definitely they are referred as a protista right so two major class i have mentioned here right in the animal kingdom right 
वन दैट इज मोनेरा एंड सेकेंड दैट इज प्रोटिस्टा राइट तो सॉरी राइट सो प्रोटिस्टा मीन्स क्लास ऑफ इट इज दैट एनिमल्स राइट ग्रुप ऑफ एनिमल्स विच आर नाइदर एनिमल सेल्स नाइदर प्लांट सेल्स नाइदर फंगस राइट दे आर अ यूनिसेल्युलर यू कैरियोटिक सेल राइट दैट इज कॉल्ड ए प्रोटिस्टा okay so these two terms are now clear to you if someone ask you what is monera monera refers to a class or is a kingdom of animal right where you deal with a uh, unicellular and prokaryotic prokaryotics are always unicellular right so i am just making my a uh, 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 statement for prokaryotic right they are a prokaryotic cell right and if someone ask what is protista then definitely it is the uh, uh, animal kingdom right where you discuss unicellular eukaryotic cell okay so this two organization right this two classification monera and protista because they are uh, uh, you can say that uh, unicellular in such a case definitely you don't have a uh, organization right level of organization if you remember we have discussed that cells different types of cells right same type of a cell in in same in origin uh, similar in the structure and designed to perform a unique task that we call as a tissue different types of tissue forms organ different organs form a organ system and different organ system will form a body so such level of organization such division of labor is observed in multicellular organism so their cellular organization does exist and that's why cell is considered as a structural and functional unit of life but when you have a a cellular organism right because unicellular organization right this structures monera is a unicellular prokaryotic structure protista also are unicellular eukaryotic structure they do not have a cellular organization what you call as an absence of cellular organization right so because they are unicellular right so single cell perform all tasks right you can consider that if say for example i start explaining biology physics uh, chemistry everything definitely does not make any sense right so there has to be division of labor there has to be you can say a level of you can say a organization right similarly you can consider a doctor right who is a cardiologist also who is a pulmonologist pulmonologist also right oncologist also if such all specialty is present in one doctor is it possible no fine so in that case definitely the such consideration right you can make for monera and protist right this is a cell right monera say for example bacteria so bacterial cell is a cell who is performing all type of function digestion also respiration also circulation also excretion also right and in that case definitely it is a very protoplasmic grade of organization right there is no cellular organization i hope you are clear right there is no division of labor because one cell is performing all function that's why it is a cellular organism and here you cannot consider cell as a structural and functional unit because a single cell is having all form of you can say life right all functions which a body is performing uh, right and in that case definitely if it is an a cellular organism or if it is an a cellular level of organization then in that case you cannot considered as a structural and functional unit and that's why it is exception to cell theory right so for example i define here monera monera are definitely prokaryotic organism which lack typical nucleus why i have shown here that they lack a typical nucleus right because there is no nucleus been present here right so definitely here just you can say that nucleoid is there right nucleoid that means it is similar to nucleus it is not exactly nucleus right that's why i mentioned they are lacking typical nucleus bacteria do not have nucleus if you check diagram that is present in your book it is mentioned as a nucleoid not as a nucleus okay fine so this is the reason why we consider monera and protista as you can say that exception exception to cell theory so question that was asked in the old examination right neat understanding type of question that which one of the following is a uh, exception to cell theory so you will be given three options which are eukaryotic cell but multicellular okay and then you will be given one example either of monera or protista kingdom right so maybe a bacteria 
or maybe a protein star that will be given as an example and that definitely is an exception to cell theory. See, this detail are not mentioned in the textbook, but this is an understanding type of a detail that you have to cover, right? Such type of questions are very important for preparation of me. Moving toward the second, that is the uh, subcellular structure, right? Subcellular structure means what? Right? You know that an uh, organism is defined as a cell when you have presence of cell membrane, cytoplasm, and nucleus. These three things are necessary. Otherwise, it cannot be called as a cell. If an organism is lacking any of this, it is definitely a subcellular structure, right? So, say for example, virus, right? So, virus is definitely having just nucleic acid material and then a protein coat, right? That we call as a capsid, nucleocapsid. So, nothing else, no organelles, no mitochondria, no endoplasmic reticulum, right? No Golgi body, nothing else, right? And that's why virus is considered as link between the you can say that uh, living and non living organism right so right say for example virus as such cannot grow right if you even if you give a nutrient media right right uh, recently we are having a, a crisis of coronavirus right you all know that and in that case if you put coronavirus on a a, a, a agar plate or maybe a glucose rich nutrient medium virus itself cannot grow why it cannot grow because it is not having any assembly for the growth Ah, virus can grow when it's once it comes in contact with the you can say that uh, living organism right so if it is there within a bacteria or maybe within human then it can multiply because it will insert its nucleic acid in the host cell and then it will multiply so that's why virus is considered as a link between living and non living organism and that's why you consider this as a subcellular structure okay now if it is not having it is not considered as a cell how can you consider as a part of you can say structural and functional unit of a body, right? So in that case, subcellular structure definitely they do not fit into this cell theory concept, right? They are also exception to the cell theory. So again, OID, wherever word OID is there, it means similar. So virioids refers to a structure which is similar to virus. It is not exactly virus, but it is similar to virus that is referred as a virioids. Okay. And these are some mysterious molecules which we define as a prions, right? Prions refers to, this refers to protein which can produce infection, right? So, protein which can produce infection that are referred as a prions. These are still mysterious molecules. They are still only proteins or peptides. Still, they are able to produce infection in the human, okay? And they are defined as a prions, okay? So, these three structures, they are not considered as a cell. They are considered as a subcellular structure and in that case definitely they do not fit just like monera and protista they does not fit into the uh, concept of the cell theory right where we consider that the animal bodies they are composed of cell and various products of the cell that is what we state right but then these structures do not fit into the theory so in one uh, question right old question that was asked in the examination neat examination even virus was given as an option and there you have to consider it as an exception to the cell theory. Okay, that's why we are discussing here. Okay, chalo. So, let's, that is a very easy one. Okay, let's move to some other details. We have discussed in the last slide, right, cell division is having two process, karyokinesis and cytokinesis. I hope you remember, right. Jo yad na to ek par please thodu revision je chhe, e topic nu jarak, me discuss kairu kari le jo, right. Because what we are going to discuss is now is a multinucleated organism. Now, normally what happens is you have a uninucleated organism, right? This is a cell membrane, hydron, and this is a nucleus, fine. So, normally a cell is having a single nucleus. That is normally what happens. When you have a cell division process, right, normally what you should, uh, uh, what we will uh, uh, have is, right, when this process of just I'm rubbing this part. So no, normally, what you have is very sorry. Yeah. So what you have is when this cell divides, right? This is a cell. When this cell undergoes the division, 
initially as I told you that it will lead to nuclear division right. So, here I have shown I have tried to show a nuclear division this cell is having two nucleus and then finally, what you will have is the cytoplasm will also divide and then it will result in an identical two cells which are having single nucleus right. So, initially there is a nuclear division here is nuclear division and then the division of cytoplasm right this is division of cytoplasm and then you have resultant two cells right which are uninucleate. Now, so that means there is karyokinesis initially and then followed by cytokinesis whenever cytokinesis is completed then and then you can have a two in independent cell otherwise not. Now, if this cytokinesis will not happen then what karyokinesis has occurred but cytokinesis has not occurred right it is not completed then you will have a single cell which is having two nucleus maybe further division of nucleus more than two nucleus. So, if you have more than one nucleus within a cell that condition is referred as a multinucleated condition and this multinucleated condition again is an exception to the cell theory. Why it is exception to cell theory? Because normally it is nucleus which is controlling the behavior of a cell right the metabolic activities all sort of you can control is with the nucleus and if you have two nucleus or more than two nucleus definitely it will not fit into the cell theory concept ok. So, two such possibilities are there when you have a free nuclear division that is karyokinesis is there, but cytokinesis is not there right that is called as a free nuclear division and this process in biology is referred as a co-inocytic condition right and that example very important examples which are asked in the previous examination that is rhizopus which is a fungus ok and uh, which area right that is an algae. So, these two are examples right where you will find free nuclear divisions right again rhizopus which is a fungus and which area which is an algae right these two are having multinucleated condition because karyokinesis is completed, but cytokinesis is not such a case they will lead to a multinucleated condition. Also in some of the eukaryotic cells developed cells even in the human cell there is a presence of a condition what you call as a syncytium. Here also we we'll try to draw a diagram right definitely here also there is you can say that uh, a condition right where definitely site uh, uh, we are trying to show the nuclear division right. So, I am directly showing the division of nucleus right. So, karyokinesis is completed right and cytokinesis is also completed. So, there are two different cells right from a one cell I have shown two different cells, but eventually what happens is right what will happen is because they are uh, uh, you can say that uh, designed to perform a unique task. So, they will ultimately fuse right cell membrane of this structure ultimately gets fused previous diagram I what I have shown was ok let me draw a diagram ha, here there are two independent cell, but because of the task that they are given say for example, muscle contraction you need all cells of the uh, uh, skeletal muscle to be contracted otherwise it will not result in a complete contraction right. So, that for that reason what you need is this cell has, has to be ultimately fused. So, here there is a fusion of cell right this was th these were two independent cell after there is a fusion now this is a single cell right this is a single cell ok. Such type of condition is observed in case of cardiac muscle cell in case of skeletal muscle cell where we say that these cells are in a syncytium right cyto refers to cell and sync refers because they are synchronized to perform a unique task you must have learned say for example, someone is dancing in a group. So, they all are moving in the same way right moving their hands maybe jumping in the air. So, there is a sync right. So, similar type of if one cell gets contracted other cell also will also get contracted right and if these two cells simultaneously get contracted then and then it will result in shortening of because that uh, uh, a tissue what you called as a contraction right. So, that is a unique feature of many cell and this case also you have definitely cells are fused, but the nucleus many nucleus you can observe in a single cell right they will appear like that such type of an 
appearance such type of an condition again is a multi nucleated condition and that we call as a syncytium okay so again we have because that discussed a very important condition right where uh, there is multi nucleated condition two such conditions we have uh, uh, tried to because that uh, learn right so that which are those one is coenocyte coenocyte is a condition where there is a free nuclear division right that is karyokinesis happens but then cell fails to perform cytokinesis okay and and that is definitely observed in some cells like fungus like rhizopus algae like wuch area second condition what we told that karyokinesis and cytokinesis both gets completed right so there is complete cell division there is no doubt about it. but eventually this process because they have to perform a unique task these cells get fused and because of fusion of cell there is again appearance of a multi nucleated condition like say for example cardiac muscle cell skeletal muscle cell this is called as a syncytium this all are considered as exception to the cell theory okay so in whatever topics that we have discussed until now right until in this series of video lectures this was comparatively a heavier part right definitely we have tried to make it very easy right and i hope you have understood with the words and diagrams that i have shown in my video lecture okay so just go through it if you have doubt definitely you can contact our classes right you uh, we can solve your doubts right and in next lecture we will have a very important video right that how a cell looks like our eukaryotic prokaryotic cells looks like what are the components of this cells right that is what we are going to discuss right so don't miss to watch the next video lecture right uh, of this series of video lecture fine so thank you very much